Hi, this is Mike from Microsoft Microsoft Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to be taking a look at probably the best £6.50 I've ever spent on my computer. And that is saying something because I've bought a lot of things for around about that sort of price. But this is absolutely excellent. So, this is a 10 port addressable RGB hub, which is SATA powered, works with standard 5 volt 3 pin addressable RGB devices. And if you are like me and you're really into your RGB and got loads of different things, lots of fans, maybe a couple of cable strips, all that kind of stuff, then you may well want to grab yourself one of these devices to take some of the strain off of your motherboard. Now, connecting up a whole bunch of things to your motherboard can cause various kinds of issues, so you might want to consider that. One or two devices, generally is fine. Three, four, you're okay. But when you start daisy chaining a whole bunch of things because of the amount of amperage and wattage that the LEDs use, you can get problems such as random crashing of your PC. And also you may get just more obvious symptoms such as your addressable RGB lighting not lighting up as you'd expect or some of it going like on the fritz. A couple of different colours showing where they should be showing like unicorn puke and it's just plain blue or something along those lines. Anyway, you probably understand that, hence the reason you're probably watching this video because you want to try and remedy it. So this is actually a really good way of doing it. This is uh, basically a complete ripoff, but only in terms of the branding. So it has got the uh, ROG logo on there. It isn't an official ASUS product by any means, and you can see these quite often on places like Amazon under various different brands. I will put some links in the video description, which hopefully will be okay for most people. If for some reason you can't find it, do drop us a line and we'll point you in the right direction because these companies come and go all the time. Prices do change as well, so again, do check out the links just to make sure that it's still around about the same sort of price. You should really be able to pick this up for less than £10, pretty much any time of the year. At the moment, it seems to be considerably cheaper, about £6.50. And if you want to save yourself a little bit more money, but perhaps wait considerably longer, a couple of weeks or something, you can pick these up on AliExpress for basically a couple of pounds. So looking at the unit itself, you can see there is a plexiglass front. Now this is actually something which is really important, which a lot of these type of hubs actually don't have. So you have the bare pins showing, so potentially if it came unstuck or something, there's potential that the five volts could go straight to ground in your case. It's unlikely, but potentially it could happen. And also just doing things in the back of your case, but with cable management, you could accidentally bend one of those very fragile pins. So it's nice that it's somewhat enclosed. It's not fully enclosed, which is good because also it lets the electronics breathe a little bit and if there's any heat generated, it will quite easily dissipate it. When it comes to powering it, all you need is a single SATA connection from your power supply. Very simple to do. Pretty much every power supply on the market these days has at least one spare SATA port, so you shouldn't have any issues there. When it comes to actually connecting it to your computer, so if you've got a computer which has a built-in addressable RGB header, such as the ones you're seeing in the pictures now on the screen, it's not a problem, you can plug this in straight away. They do include in the packaging a very simple and straightforward thing. So this is a female to female five volt addressable RGB cable. So one end plugs into your motherboard or a controller of some other type. And this end here, very simply, just plugs in three pin section, plug that into there. Let's try not to bend the pins and there you go. So effectively your signal, your addressable RGB signal goes into this bit, gets fed into here from that single port and then that will be distributed across all of the additional 10 ports there. So you've got five on that side, five on that side. Now I should clarify, a lot of people ask this, the signal will only be replicated. So whatever signal is coming into this particular header, it will be exactly the same on every single one of those ports, whether or not something's plugged in or not. So they will be active. You don't get things like the chase effect. So if you want one fan here, another fan here, so say for instance, fans one to five, you want them to start at blue, then it's go blue, 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 and go down the line, it doesn't. All of them will be giving exactly the same signal at exactly the same time, which is very common. So hopefully you understand that. And obviously there are no fan connectors on here as such in terms of PWM or speed. So this is purely for lighting only when it comes to fans or if you're perhaps hooking up five volt addressable RGB strips, etc. So I think that is pretty much it for an introduction. I should also mention actually on the back in terms of actually mounting it to your PC, there is a like 3M adhesive double-sided on the back there. So you just peel that off and you can stick it onto your PC. Personally, I would have liked for this to have been possibly magnetic as well, 
but unfortunately it isn't, it's only six pounds. So if you want to actually convert that into a magnetic mount, you can pick up double-sided magnetic tape, very, very cheap. I'll try and link that in the video description as well. But with that said, let's get this thing wired up and I'll show you exactly how it can be used. So we've got a very basic setup here. So power supply, this unit here is acting as a supply. So this is a addressable RGB controller, which works with remote control. You've probably seen it a million times. This is from Game Max. I'll link this in the video description as well, because whenever I do these videos, people will always ask, how do you control the RGB? So this is the answer, remote control here. This in itself is SATA powered. So this is effectively taking the job of being a motherboard for this particular demonstration. So we've got our ROG hub thing here. There is our addressable RGB. So I'm gonna plug that into the motherboard. It's not a motherboard, obviously. I know it's not a motherboard, it's a controller, but the effect is the same. So if you wanna use it with a motherboard, you can do. If you wanna use it with a separate controller that maybe comes with your case or whatever, maybe one of these game action units, then you certainly can do if you wanna give it a little bit more juice. So the next thing to do is to provide it with some power. So we're gonna plug a SATA cable into the end here. So I've got one of these spare actually on the power supply. So all I need to do is to plug that in there and no magic smoke came out. So that's always a brilliant start. So let's plug in one of our fans that we've got here on the desk. So all we're gonna do is take our five volt addressable RGB type connection. Now, of course, this has got a daisy chain facility as do a lot of these devices now. But like I said earlier in the video, daisy chaining too many can be a little bit problematic for some headers. Now you don't have to plug this into any one of these specifically. In terms of numbering, you can plug it in wherever suits you. So if it suits your cable wiring, plug it into port one. If it's five, six, whatever you want to do, the choice is entirely up to you. So now, as you can see, we have our addressable RGB there coming out of our fan. So if we want to connect up another fan, all you need to do is find a five volt, three pin addressable RGB header. And just to prove that it doesn't matter where you plug them in at all, I'm going to plug it into a header further down the chain there. So that is, I think, number one or number five, whichever it may be. Again doesn't matter at all. And if we want to plug in a addressable RGB strip, maybe we're gonna have one of these at the bottom of our case perhaps, then we can plug this in as well and it will replicate exactly what is going on with the other things. So hopefully that gives you an idea of what this is about. So the actual sequence of the lights is gonna be the same regardless. So it doesn't kind of go spin there, go down the strip, then into there. It doesn't work like that, they're not channeled together. They are all separate individual channels, but all displaying the same thing, if that makes any sense. So if I turn it off, see, there we go, it's off. Change the color, we'll go to red, green, blue, etc., etc. So as they're all doing exactly the same thing. They're just replicating a single signal, which we're getting from this control box, and it's basically distributing it very much like a TV antenna system at home. So if you've got a, a poor signal on your TV antenna, which is on the roof, it goes into a distribution box. Then you can wire one of those ports on the distribution box to different rooms in the house and you can all watch TV. Now you can watch different channels, but that's probably confusing things a little bit for more. So just think of this as a, basically as a distribution box for addressable RGB. So anyway, I think I've gone on far enough. Hopefully I've explained what this does what you can achieve with it. It doesn't have any built-in form of control. So again, if we turn this on, this unit is currently active. If we remove the input, then it will stay on what it is on because it's still got the signal there. But if we then unplug and then plug it back in, we get nothing because there's no signal now feeding that input. So. This is effectively a dumb device designed for distributing and replicating a signal, which has to be supplied to it. So there you go. If you want to pick up one of these, I'm not even going to try to pronounce the actual manufacturer's name that we bought it from. But if you do want to pick up one of these, again, links will be in the video description. Please let me know what you think about it and let me know if you've bought one of these. Has it blown up? Has it caught on fire? Has it been fine? If you do look at the Amazon uh, comments, and the ratings, etc. These are weird. They either get kind of like a one star or a five star. There's very few in between. So either they work straight away and they do exactly what they stay on the tin or they catch on fire. So let us know what your experiences are. Personally, I've had a couple of these now and I've never had a problem with them. So maybe it's just where people possibly not wiring these up correctly or are slightly damaged in transit. 
I don't know, but please do let us know your thoughts in the comments section. I think that's going to wrap this one up. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.